And you've been practicing law here in San Luis Obispo for or San Luis Obispo County for how long now? Well, I've been practicing law for 43 years. I've uh, lived here for 61 years now, and I, uh, uh, I've been involved in 50 years of our county elections. And so why are you running for clerk recorder? You know, the reason I'm running is uh, when Tommy Gong resigned in the middle of his term, I, I realized that we are so divided here with a lot of people thinking the last couple of elections were stolen and a lot of people worried about voter suppression uh, from the other side that uh, somebody with my experience uh, was needed to step forward to try to bring everybody into the process so that we can restore elections that everybody can trust. And it, it's, uh, you have to make sure that uh, people on both sides of the fence can trust in our elections. I've, in practicing election law, I've represented the Democratic Party in San Luis Obispo County in court. I've represented individual Democrats in court in election cases. I've represented uh, Republican candidates in court, and I've helped independents with their petitions for initiatives. And so I think I'm, I'm one of the few people who is positioned to be able to, to bring both sides in, talk to both sides, listen to both sides, and make sure that the elections are run uh, securely and with integrity and in a way that everybody can see that. That's part of the problem is uh, the folks toss around the word transparency all the time. But when you actually see the methodology that is used for putting on the elections, there's a lot of uh, uh, places where people can't see what's going on. And I know how to bring folks in so they can. And I also know how to protect the really important stuff that has to be kept secret, like the codes on the machines. Um, I've been appointed as a special master by the Superior Court many, many times in our county to uh, review uh, privileged and secret materials and uh, sequester those while disclosing those things that can be disclosed to law enforcement or to the courts. Do you have any reason to believe, uh, based on your experience and your uh, long history here in San Luis Obispo and San Luis Obispo County, do you have any reason to believe that uh, the electorate, the general electorate, has lost its trust in the election system? I, yes, I, I'd say you've got about 25% of the electorate who has lost its trust in the electoral system on the conservative side and you've got about 25% of the electorate on the liberal or progressive side that is worried about uh, uh, elections being suppressed and voters being suppressed. And, um, and, and both of those have to be uh, prevented. And both of those uh, sets of fears have to be addressed in a way that uh, makes sure that uh, everybody can see that every citizen gets to vote, every citizen gets to register to vote, and every citizen's vote is counted once. Yeah, well, I mean, that's it, it's, it's it's basic kind stuff. of how it works, right? I mean, but, but you have to be able to demonstrate that to everyone. Okay. Um, so in this primary mm -hmm. uh, next month, um, my... I'm assuming that it won't necessarily be the the first past the, the post thing and that it may be a runoff in November. In order for there not to be a runoff, one of the candidates has to receive 50% plus one vote. And in that case, California turns what is a primary into a general election for county offices. Um, but um, we do have a three-way race. It is possible that I will prevail by getting 50% plus one. That's my aim. But it's also possible there will be a, a uh, runoff in November. Anything else you want the public to know about your candidacy going into the primary? And by the way, yeah. the ballots are already out. Oh, yeah. yeah. They've yeah. already gone out. So. They went out Monday. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, I have... 
been working on elections for so long. I, I've held office uh, on the Port San Luis Harbor Commission, for instance, uh, for 10 years. And uh, during my first term, I actually had to get uh, somebody prosecuted for vote fraud because they didn't live in the district. They ran for office, registering at a vacant lot uh, in the district. And, uh, and they got themselves on the Harbor Commission when he was convicted by a jury of his peers, he was removed. And that prevented uh, selling out the public to large uh, corporate interests. The other thing that happened during that period was we had a county clerk who uh, increased the price of local elections. So harbor districts, school districts, cities, uh, community services districts suddenly were paying the county five times more than they had ever paid for having their elections consolidated. So what happened is that became a profit point for the county uh, that took money away from school children for books and teachers. It took money away from cities for firefighters and police. It took money away from the Harbor District for rebuilding piers. Um, as the county clerk recorder, I'm going to roll back that increase to encourage more uh, local elections. And, and where it affects things, you might have noticed that in the La Silla Mar School District last year, uh, there was a, a trustee who died, and the board was told by the county clerk to put one seat on the June 7th ballot would cost $350,000. Now, that's just a little bit more printing on the ballot. That's all the cost there is. It doesn't even increase the postage significantly. So um, your uh, viewers will be able to count on me to roll those prices back so that they can have more control over their local governments.